Hi guys, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I'm going to do number 17 in my powerful tools of Affinity Photo. And I don't have any room here, so just give me a second. I'm just going to make a little bit of rearrangement. While I'm rearranging, I hope you'll take a second and please hit that subscribe button because it really helps my channel. Thank you so much. Today is, we're going to talk about isolating a layer. And there's several ways you can do this, but there's a really good trick that I learned just recently. And I want to show it to you, so let's get started. So I'm going to open up a file. And I have the link to this file. It's a vector image, and I have the link to this file in the description. And it doesn't have to be a vector image, but it just has to have different layers on it. Now, sometimes when you have an image that has so many different things, uh, so many different layers and groups, it's very hard to pick things out. Like if something is grouped, it's very hard. And this is not the trick right now. I'm, this is showing you how I have to figure out what to do half the time. When I want to select something inside this group, for example, if I want to select this egg right here, any part of this egg, I would I can't do it when I click it because it's in a group. If I hold Command or Control down and double click it, it will select it. So right here is the layer. But that still doesn't help me. What I used to have to try and do is remember where it was. And sometimes what I'd have to do is drag it all the way up to the top. And then I want to work on this. And then I have to remember where it was. I'm going to undo that. And there's something else. For example, see this purple one right here? I want to hold down Option, double click on the purple. And that's selected here. And this is all the parts of that purple. Well, what if I wanted to take that purple and change the gradient? There's a gradient in there. I can't really see the whole thing. And sometimes I want to see it because if I move that around somewhere else, it, I might want to show different parts of the gradient. Well, here's the trick that I learned, and I think it's a crazy, wonderful trick. Once you know what layer it is, make sure you have nothing selected and you have your move tool picked up here, but nothing can be selected. And I know right down here in my layers panel, that's the layer I want. I would hold Option or Alt and click once. And there it is. Everything else disappears while you're working. Now, remember, if you click anywhere else like that, it comes back. If you click on any other layer, it comes back. But in the meantime, if I wanted to work on this layer, I would hold Option or Alt, click it. And then I can go to my fill, for example. And maybe I did not want that to be that color. Maybe I want to change this to a blue. So let's say, let's do here, let's do a dark blue to a light blue, maybe. And so I'll go like that. And then on here, I'll go back to the blues and maybe I'll make this blue lighter or I'll pick that blue and go lighter this way. And at least I can see it all. And I can also change where I want it to be. And I have a complete view of this. So this is really a pretty cool tool. And I didn't know this. I mean, it's hard to find because sometimes it's not an actual tool. I'm, put, I'm calling it power, power tools, but there's no tool to pick to do this. You just have to know how to do this. But I still think it's a power tool. So I put it in this series of my tutorials. Now all I do is I can click on another layer or I can click anywhere else. And let's just click outside of that. And now there it is, it's blue. So it kept itself in the same place in my layer. And I was able to change it and see exactly what I wanted to do. And I think that's fantastic. So I think I can even, let's try something else. What if I wanted the shape to be a little different? Let me do it again. I'm holding down option, clicking. And it's a vector graphic, so if I hit the node tool, maybe I didn't, maybe I wanted the shape of that egg to be slightly exaggerated. No, nope, this will not look good, but I'm just showing you that, what if I wanted that egg to be like a, an oddball egg or something like really crazy and I wanted to add another node and do something like this, which I would never do by the way, but I'm doing that just to show you. Then I click on back to nothing and there it is. 
But I would never have been able to do that because I wouldn't be able to see the whole thing. Because maybe later on I want to select that and now I'll do the command. I double clicked on that and I, I can move it somewhere else. I'm still in the same layer location. So at least now if I decided I wanted to move it here, I knew the new shape and I knew exactly what it looked like and what was underneath it. So that was really a quick tip and also a powerful tool tip. And if you like this and you found it useful, please take a second. It only takes a second to hit that subscribe button. And it helps me because the more subscribers I have, the more YouTube will put me up front and then other people will be able to use these tutorials. So thank you very much and have a great day. Bye.